everybody, welcome back to Explore Church Online. It's fantastic to be able to do children's church with you today. If you're new, a special welcome to you and we hope that you'll join us again. And keep watching until the end. We've got so much fun in store for you today. If you've had a birthday this week, then happy birthday. I hope you had a fantastic day and that you were spoiled rotten. Before we start today's program, I'd just like to say a prayer. So please close your eyes with me and let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we can come before you today. Thank you, God, that you know our hearts and you know the plans that you have for us. And Lord, today as we learn about you and your word, and I just ask God that you'll help us to remember what we learn and that we can take it and use it and help our friends and our family to learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, guys, are you ready? It's time to worship. Here we go. Let's jump for Jesus and sing out really loud. One, two, three, go. I have decided I'll go if you go with me On my own I'm history Only you can carry all my shame I have decided I'll go if you go with me On my own I'm history Only you can carry all my shame Trust in you cause your love is enough for me I lay it all down, I give it all up I trust in you cause your love is enough for me I lay it all down, I give it all up I trust in you cause your love is satisfied Searching of my soul Your grace and love your throne with arms stretched wide you run to bring me home Jesus it's you alone Jesus it's you alone
you say our memory verse? Who can remember it? I bet you can. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Let's say it again. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Hey kids, I hope you enjoyed worship and you are warm and ready for, for the story. But before that, I would like to invite all the kids that's nine years and older for a one-on-one -on -one time with me and I'll be asking some really good questions. So stick around and I'll see you there. Are you ready for the story kids? Let's, let's all come and sit down here. Sit down and let's all listen and all have our ears ready to receive the Word of God. So today we're going to be sharing about wisdom and discernment. And who of you know um, King Solomon? Anybody? Yes, I hear you. Yes, King Solomon was the son of King David. Yes, you've got that right. So, I want to tell you a very important story about King Solomon and what he did and why he was so well known. Do anybody know why he is so well known? Yes, because he was the wisest man on earth and will ever be. Um, but does anybody know why he was the wisest man? Yes, that is correct. He was the wisest man because God made him the wisest man. But why did God made him the wisest man? So I want to take you on a story and I want you to imagine, imagine this story. One day King Solomon went up to the highest place of worship and he was worshipping and sacrificing um, whole burnt offerings to God and that night when he went to bed he was sleeping he he had a dream and just imagine this you're dreaming you're sleeping and dreaming and all of a sudden there is God just imagine them if I close my eyes and imagine God I don't think my imagination is big enough because God is so big it's not wide enough my imagination is not high enough not deep enough because God is so, so big, yes, and God met him there. Imagine God meeting you in your dream and asking you this question. My son, my daughter, my child, what do you want? What can I give you? And what would, you, what would, you, what would your response be? I know my, my, my response will be sometimes, God, I want many plenty of money i want a big house i want a, 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 a fancy car or i want lots of friends or god i want food or or god i want whatever you, your desire is it's always we want the stuff we want and king solomon uh, did the opposite so he was he became king after his father died David and the Lord met him there and he said Lord Lord God you put me in this place to 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 lead um, these people I'm the king and I'm still a child I need to I, I need to lead these people but I need the wisdom I need the discernment to lead them I need to know what is right and wrong and God, God valued that, that, that um, request. Um, King Solomon asked for wisdom and discernment to lead the people into, into, into the right path. And God valued that. And God even said, on, on, on bonus, I will give you all the wealth, all the health, and you will live a long life. And isn't that amazing? Huh? So... Just imagine God asking you in your time of worship or when you are sleeping and dreaming, God is asking you the same questions. 
what can I give you my son, my daughter, my child? And I want our response to be, no, God, I want to know what is right and what is wrong. And you know, in James 1 verse 5, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking him. So friends, I want to encourage you to, to follow the way of King Solomon by asking God for wisdom and discernment, whether it's with anything, with, with school work, with friends, with how, how to be at home with your parents. Yeah, just ask God to, to give you the wisdom and discernment for that. And he will gladly and generously give you Thanks for joining me for the story and I hope that this message blessed you. So I just want to end off with a prayer. Let's all close our eyes. Father God, thank you for King Solomon. Thank you for the wonderful man that you have made him. Lord, we just want to ask in the same way as King Solomon asked, would you give us the wisdom and the discernment of, of doing and knowing what is right and what is wrong. Yeah, and just bless, bless us with, with, with that, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name alone. Amen. Amen. Okay, are we ready to do our craft? Okay, so what we're going to need is some tin foil. Okay, so we need some tin foil and we need some stickers. See these ones? Rhinestone stickers that look like jewels. Okay, some glue, a pair of scissors, a stapler, <laughs> some cello tape. A cardboard box, a cereal box works well, and some pens to decorate your work with. Okay, let's make our craft. Get mom and dad to help you remember that's super important. up nice and wide. So we've got a big piece and cut it in half. Just like that. Having fun. Cut carefully. Alright. So we've got two pieces of card. Then with this card, you're going to cut the shape of a crown, because that's what we're making, Solomon's crown. Okay, so cut it a bit straight. You could make any design that you want to. But remember, crowns have points on them. Three points or five points, it's up to you. Okay, so you've got something that looks like this. See it? And tidy it up a little bit. Or you can use that piece if you want to. You can make two crowns out of one piece of cardboard. Okay, so we've got that. Then your other strip that you cut, remember, cut off the edges and you make it a nice broad strip. That's going to be your headband. It's going to go around the back of your head and you're going to staple it onto the piece that you cut just now. That I cut just now. So I've got a piece like this and my other piece, okay, <laughs> then we're going to take it like this, let's staple it in two places, right, measure your head size, something like that, you can ask mom and dad to help, mine needs to be a bit shorter.
Okay. Let's see. Something like this. Okay, there we go. Let's staple it together. But first, actually before we staple it, let's get our tin foil. And we're gonna lay that out on the table. And then you put your crown on top. Okay, so you can cut a piece of tin foil, just measure the sort of size. Remember, everybody's are gonna be a bit different. That's your tin foil. There we go. Okay, this piece is actually really big, so I'm gonna cut this in. No, let's not cut it in half. Just cut a little bit off the top. Ooh, what a crinkly sound. Perfect. Okay, then you're going to fold it around your crown. However you'd like. If you've got to cut it a little bit, that's up to you. I'm going to cut mine a little bit. Because otherwise it's not going to bend into the crown very nicely. So you're going to cut down the little center pieces just so that it's got some place to bend. Okay, and you bend it around. See, like this. You can even tear it a little bit, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay, and remember if you cut it too big, that's also okay because you just get to scrunch it a little bit more. Oh! <laughs> Take all the pieces. My dog is barking outside. Sorry about that. Okay. And then remember I cut my other piece. Try and put your shiny piece on the outside so that it looks pretty. Because one of the sides of the tin foil is dull and the other side is shiny. Stick the shiny side on. Okay. And press it down really hard. See? It? Super shiny, shiny, shiny. Then you can take the sealer tape. Break a piece of that, cut a piece maybe, seeing it's not working. Okay, and you sellotape your tin foil closed, because otherwise sometimes it just comes off and that's a real pain. So you're going to sellotape the tin foil closed, a couple of pieces, scissors again. I need a little bit more tin foil just to make this pretty. So I'm going to tear this piece. Yep, my scissors nearly went flying. tight quite a big job But I think tin, uh, sellotape is a lot faster than glue because it dries faster, though it actually doesn't need to dry. And you can just put it all over. And it sticks to tin foil. Right, so it's like this. You measure the size on your head. Okay. You ask someone to help you staple it if you can't do it by yourself. Okay. Staple it like that. You can put some sellotape over the staples so they don't hurt you when you're wearing your crown. 
Right, and then the fun part. And the fun part is sticking on our rhinestones. You can make it a girl crown or a boy crown, whatever you want. Doesn't matter, as long as it's yours and you remember what the lesson was about. And what was the lesson about? It was about wisdom. Who had wisdom? King Solomon. That's right, King Solomon. And he was a king in the Bible and God gave him wisdom because he had a dream. And in his dream, what happened? He asked God to give him a heart of understanding and great wisdom. And God blessed him with that, remember. So that's why we're making a king's crown. Okay. Right, so that's nice and secure. Remember my pretty rhinestones that I had? You can use any stickers you want. I'm going to use these ones because they're nice and super shiny. Put some jewels on my crown. You can use stickers or tinsel or whatever shiny things you'd like. If you want you can even use your markers to draw on there if you don't have stickers isn't this just so much fun quite a long video okay let's maybe let's draw some what shall we draw? Some jewels. Can draw like circles. But remember, if you use Koki, it's got to dry. And sometimes it might take a little long to dry on tin foil. See? But it'll probably work. And it looks pretty cool. There we go. We'll put some yellow jewels on here. Maybe the yellow doesn't stand out so well. <laughs> okay, you can use any colors that you've got. I'm just using highlighters because that's what I've got and that works well. Right, I think my crown is finished. There we go, have a look at that. Isn't that awesome? Enjoy guys, have fun. Hey friends, thank you for staying behind and wanting to spend this time with me. We're going to be digging deeper into the story of King Solomon and we're going to be asking God some questions. So I would really encourage you to take part in this and really allow God to speak to you. Um, let's start off with a prayer. Holy Father, thank you for this time we can spend with you and with each other. We just pray that you would help us to understand these questions and, and would you give us the answers because you are our source of truth. We pray this in Jesus' name alone. Amen. Okay, I'm going to ask some questions and then I'm going to give you some, some answers as well. So you choose the right answer. If you don't understand the question, ask your parents to, to explain it to you as well. And if you want to write them down, get a piece of paper and a pen and... I'll give you some time to, to write them down as well. Okay, so question one is, why do you think it is important to have godly wisdom? Hmm. Why do you think it is important to have godly wisdom? So A, to show everyone that you know everything. B, to know the will and the ways of God. C. So that you can become rich. So is it A. To show everyone that you know everything. B. To know the will and the ways of God. C. So that you can become rich. Which one is it? 
Yes, that is correct. It's B. To know the will and the ways of God. Just like King Solomon, he wanted to know the will and the ways of God so that he could lead the people well into, into the way that God wanted him to do that. And not to enrich himself or not to show that he knows everything. But he wanted to do the will of God. Okay, question two. What is the difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom? What is the difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom? So I'm going to give you a few options here. Okay. So you decide which one which one is, is godly and which one is worldly. So you can write that down on your paper as well. So godly wisdom or worldly wisdom choose to share with others is that godly or worldly okay next one to keep everything for myself is that godly wisdom or worldly wisdom okay next one to to love others is that godly or worldly or to love only myself isn't that godly or worldly? Next one is to, to have a heart of forgiveness. Is that godly or worldly? Or to keep grudges. Godly or worldly? And the last one is to serve people. Is that godly or worldly? Or to be served by people. Is that godly or worldly? So yes, if you have written this down, uh, please make sure that it, that it is correct. So godly wisdom is to share with others, to love others, to forgive others, and to serve people. And the worldly wisdom is to keep everything for myself, to love only myself, to keep grudges, or to be served by people. So there's a very big difference between uh, godly and worldly wisdom. And yeah, I would encourage you to, to um, follow the godly wisdom where, because that's, that is God's will. And yeah, and the, the last question is, um, how does it make you feel that you can ask God for wisdom? How does it make you feel that you can ask God for wisdom? Like I said in James 1 verse 5, that if you need wisdom, you can ask our generous God for it and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you. He loves you so much, he wants to give it to you. You only need to ask for it. It's so, it's so wonderful that it makes me feel that I don't, I don't have to know everything by myself. I don't have to always have, have the right answers. But when I need an answer, when I need wisdom, when I need discernment, I can reach up to God, I can have a quiet time and ask him, God, what do I need to do? What, how, what decision I need to make? It certainly takes the pressure off me. It certainly is a big relief on me that it's not about me. It's, it's not in my power, but it's in his power. And it's his wisdom and he will give it freely to you. So thank you for joining me. Um, I hope this time gave you some really good answers to to the questions you you have yeah and i i just truly pray that, that that god will continue to work in your life continue to bless you with wisdom and discernment to help you make the right decisions uh, and to know what is right and what is wrong thank you thank you thank you friends until next time goodbye